Welcome back to another episode of Appraisal Adventures. Here we go. All right. I looked through 171 coins this time. Uh, that's the amount that she gave me to look through. And here's the aftermath. I've got it all organized. And I'll show you some of the highlights. So here is the prize. This is made out of Nordic gold. My heart stopped when I read that. And then I looked up what Nordic gold was. <laughs> it's a gold colored copper alloy. Um, this is actually a decently common alloy that's being used. And it copies the color of gold. So, anyways, this is 10 kroner from Sweden and it's worth about a buck. On a more serious note, we got a 1956 one franc from Switzerland. This is made of 83.5% silver and I'd value it about four dollars in this condition. Maybe more. We had another octopus man sighting. So you see his head and the four legs. And then the dancing leg guy back there, head and the legs kicking. Um, anyways, these aren't four legs. I looked it up and it's actually an Indian pants style. It's supposed to duplicate something. I'll stick a picture of that on there. We got some more from the Byzantine Empire. Again, if you watched my previous episode, these should go for about four dollars a piece or more. Got some more from the Middle East. Probably in the 700 to 1480 range. Really cool pieces, nice and thick. But I don't know. I'm pretty sure they'll go for at least four dollars. The last ancient of the bunch, this is Alexander the Great from the Kingdom of Macedonia. Now if this is real, it could go upwards of $50 or more. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to tell if it's real. I've heard something about die cracks and stuff like that. I, I have not been educated in that area. But if it's real, it's silver. Um, it would be a tetradrachm. And this would have been struck posthumously after Alexander the Great was gone in Babylon. And this would be probably from 317 to 311 BC in Macedonia. This is a really cool 25 cent piece from Rhodesia. Very large. And somewhat in rarity actually. So I'm finding that this sells for probably about seven dollars and it's in spectacular condition. Next we have some Filipino silver during the war years when the US administration was there. The 50 centavo and the 20 centavos. And I'd value the 20 centavos at about four bucks and the 50 centavos because it's in such poor condition uh, just over mint melt value for five dollars or so. Continuing with the silver, we've got one or two francs from 1918 from France. You can still see the sun rays back there. This is 83.5 percent silver, and I'd value this at about five dollars. This is kind of a cool token I found. The Knights of the Maccabees of the World. Looks like you have a tent number that hasn't been etched in and a place for an um, organization to be put there. And then you have, oops, it was upside down. Astra, Castra, Numen, Lumen. <laughs> Not exactly sure what all that's for, but it's obviously a tent symbol there. And I found that these go for about $9 online. Now this is something cool I hadn't seen before from French Oceana, 1952. This is a five franc. Pretty cool. 
and it's made of aluminum but I'd still value it at about two dollars 1948 Portuguese five escudos sixty five percent silver pretty cool I'd value it at four dollars I haven't seen farthings this old 1929 and then 1980 those are pretty nice to look at Especially the 29, it's in great condition. Very interesting. I'd value these probably a, doll, a dollar a piece. Actually, the 1890 is valued at $3. It's always fun to find something from the 1800s. So, this is a Belgium 10 cent times. I'd value it at about $1.50. This is an aluminum piece from Bangladesh. This is their FAO issue. This is from 1974. And I'd value this at about a dollar. I'm pretty interested in it because I don't have anything from Bangladesh. It's kind of cool to see a tractor on it too. So this is a bank token from Montreal. And this is Unsu. This is referred to as a bouquet token. And these were minted in about 1837. And I'd value these at about $8. This is a German 5 Fennig from 1915. And normally this wouldn't be worth too much, but I looked at it and you got the J mint mark down there by my nail. And. And this year, that is the second lowest mintage of the 5 Fennig. It's uh, just over 2.1 million minted, so it's not too many. But you also see that this one's the iron version, as it's a rusting right there. So I'd value this at about $3, because the iron ones weren't made as prevalent. They were also made in copper nickel. Here's another one that people might not have seen before. Um, it says the Republic of France, but it's actually French Indochina. And this is 10 cent times from 1945. This is made out of aluminum, but because it's from French Indochina, and that's a little bit more rare, I'd value this at $1.50. Found a couple of V-nickels. This one's in pretty poor shape, 1906. This one's in decent shape, 1910. And this one... It's stamped with an A, 1889. I'd say about a dollar a piece on these ones. Maybe two dollars for the nicer shape one. Keeping with the old American silver, or sorry, <laughs> the old American stuff. Got 1852, three cent. Now this one's made out of silver. And this is 75% silver, and I'd value this at about 10 bucks. It is worn almost thin, but these are a fun collector's item. 1876 and 1887 seated Liberty Dimes. 76 is a CC mint mark, and the 87 is a San Francisco mint mark. I'd value the Carson City at $10 and the San Francisco at $8. It's always nice to find old dimes. Some more 90% silver. We've got the 1914 Barber Dime and a 1941S Mercury Dime. I believe this is a small S. And you determine that based on how close the S mark is to the branch. I'd say $4.00. For the Barber Dime and three dollars for the Mercury Dime. The last one we've got from the USA that I wanted to mention was just a really cool luxury tax token. Actually, this is a sales tax token. Sales tax token. It's one mil from Mississippi, and it's 
Sounds like plastic. <laughs> so I've run into a few plastic ones, but not a white plastic one. So that's pretty cool. Also, there's a transit token in there. Those will probably go for a dollar. And then this is an apothecary weight. One drachm. So that's what the three I means. And apothecaries would use these for weighing their different drugs. So they'd stick it on one end of the scale and then they'd pour the powder on the other end of the scale and then make sure that it was equal to one drachm. They had these with three and two eyes and that would be a two drachm as well. Um, normally people try to collect these if they are in a box set. So they came with all kit, the scale and everything else. And the sets of weights. Um, selling these individually might be a little bit difficult, but if you do get this, I found one on eBay that sold for about $4. Um, but it was in better condition than this, so I'd put this one at $3. The last one I wanted to mention was this 1,000 reyes from Brazil. It's a commemorative issue of their 100th year of independence in 1822. The 1922 is supposed to be over on this side, but it's obviously been scratched off or whatnot. So, I'd still value this at about a buck. It's a really cool piece. So again, I'll keep you updated as I keep on going through her collection. Um, this is going to be a long process, but I'm enjoying every step of it. And I'm enjoying sharing it with you. So thank you for joining me on another adventure in appraisals and we'll see you next time this has been brad and not my world coins see ya